All right, number 64. Number 64 says, Lucy invested $10,000. Well, that's a lot of money to invest. That's $10,000 in a new mutual fund account exactly three years ago. A little dyslexic there. Three years ago. Okay, uh, the value of the account increased by 10% the first year. So first year plus 10%. Second year, it increased by 5%, and decreased by 10% during the third year. And they're asking, what is the value of the account today? Okay, um, let's see how we would figure this out. Well, uh, let's figure out what 10% of this amount is. 10% uh, of this, we actually just lop off one of the zeros. So 10% is just $1,000. $1,000 is 10% of $10,000. Okay, so they added $1,000 to this account. So basically, by the end of the first year, how much money did, uh, did this person have? Did Lucy have? She had... One one zero 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 because it's a thousand plus ten thousand. Okay, second year added another five percent. So let's find out what five percent of this amount is. Uh, set up a ratio. So x over one one zero 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 equals five over one hundred. Lose the zeros, and uh, we get five times one ten. X equals five fifty. So five percent of this amount is 550. So they added another 550. So at the end of the second year, how much money do we have? We have 11550. And this is the amount they have at the beginning of the third year. And the third year, they lost 10%. What is 10% of 11,550? Again, we just lop off the last zero. So 10% is 1155. So uh, 1155, let's do a little subtraction and we should get our answer. Ten thousand three hundred and ninety-five. Let's uh, let's see if that is the correct answer. Is it answer choice? Yes, it is one of the answer choices. Answer choice is B. Number 65 says, a certain fruit stand sold apples, so apples, for 70 cents each, and bananas for 50 cents each. And they're saying that a customer purchased both apples and bananas from a stand for a total of $6.30. What total number of apples and bananas did the customer purchase? So we're going to refer to apples as A and bananas as B. And they're saying A plus B equals what? So A is the number of apples, B is the number of bananas. Um, we can set up an equation. Um, we know that apples are 70 cents each. So however much, uh, however many apples they purchase, we would multiply that by the amount of each apple, which is 70 cents. We add that to 0.5 b and that totals six dollars and thirty cents now whenever you have decimals like this it's a pain to calculate um, it's just gonna be a total time sink so what you should really do here is multiply both sides of the equation with 10 and what you end up having is 7a plus 5b equals 63 much much easier to work with Okay, this is how I would do the problem. This one's very tricky, but it requires a little bit of intuition. What I do is I try to move these variables on opposite sides and then uh, take a look at the answer choices. So 7a equals 63 minus 5b, and divide both sides by 7, and uh, that would get me a equals 9 minus uh, 5 7 b. Now here's where it gets interesting. We know that apples 
and bananas are whole numbers. So they must be integers, right? Because nowhere in the problem do they talk about buying half an apple or a quarter of an apple or five sevenths of an apple. So however many bananas they purchased, it has to be divisible by seven because it has to be a whole number. Hopefully that makes sense. But um, we're going to look in the answer choices and find out which one will actually make this equation work. So let me list the answer choices here and we'll go through each of them. Okay, so answer choice A says, what is the answer choice A says? It says 10. Could it be 10? 5 times 10 would be 50, which is not divisible by 7. So you'd have, you'd have like a weird fraction of a banana. And so A would not work. Let's try B. B is 11. Uh, would that work? Let's see. 5 times 11. What does that get us? We 55. Wait, actually, it uh, looks like I'm doing this slightly the wrong way. Let's, um, instead of looking at the answer choices, let's just try to figure out what number would actually go in, would actually make this whole. So it's got to be divisible by 7. So let's try 7, actually. So um, if B were 7, then it would be 7 over 7. We'd cancel that out, and you would have 5 bananas. But then A would be 9 minus 5, and A would be 4. So if A equals 4 and B equals 7, those are nice whole numbers, and they do add up to $6.30. 7 plus 4 is 11. Yes, so that's why B is the correct answer. Ooh, got a little tripped up there. But um, I'd say 65 is one of the, the more difficult questions. Um, it requires a lot of intuition and uh, requires you to know your number properties. Number 66 says, at a certain school, the ratio of the number of second graders to the number of fourth graders, I'll use R for four because I don't want to duplicate that with, with first. So second graders to fourth graders is eight to five. And they also tell us that the ratio of first graders to second graders is 3 to 4. And they tell us that the ratio of third graders to fourth graders is uh, 3 to 2. And we, we want to know the ratio of first graders to third graders. Okay. Um, you know, to solve this problem, we're going to have to figure out both F and T, and, and we do that by, by combining these three equations in very creative ways. What I like to do is find the one variable that, or find one of the variables that doesn't appear here and set both F and T equal to that variable. So in this case, I'm going to use R. Okay. So I'm going to turn both of these into R. So let's find out what the relationship between T and R is. So cross multiply and you get 2t equals 3r, and then you get t equals 3 over 2r. So we know that this t is the same as saying 3 over 2r, yeah? Okay, now let's do the same thing for f. Now f is a little tougher to turn into r because they only have f over s, but they also have s over r. So we have to find the relationship there. So we know that 4f equals 3s, and we know that, uh, what else do we know? 5s equals 8r. And we, I got that just by cross-multiplying both of these. Okay. s equals 8 over 5r, and s also equals 4 over 3... Let's see here. Is that how I want to do it? Yes. So since both of these equal s, they both equal each other, so you get 4 over 3f equals 8 over 5r, and f equals, let me cross multiply again, 24 over 20. That simplifies to uh, 5 over 6. Okay, so we know f is the same as 6 over R. Okay, so let's do some division then. 6 over 5R over T is the same as saying 6 over 5R multiplied by 2 
equal for 3r, because that's the reciprocal of t. Cancel out, and you get 4 over 5r. Yeah? Now, 4 is that, is that uh, numerator, and 4 is the ratio of f, and 5 is the ratio of t. And we're looking for 5, or yeah, we're looking for f over t, so the answer is going to be 4 over 5, or 4, 2, 5, or 4, 2, 5. And that is answer choice E. Number 67. Okay, they give us these numbers here. 2, 3, 4, 5, and B as 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And they say, the two integers will randomly be selected from the sets above. One integer from set A and one from set B. What is the probability that the sum of the two integers will equal 9? Okay, so there are four integers here. There are five integers here. So in terms of probability, it's always going to be the amount we want and total amount or total possibilities. Total possibilities, there's four in A and five in B. In B, we just multiply these two numbers to get the number of total possibilities. So it's 20 on the bottom. And what's the amount that we want? We want to make sure that something from A adds or, or becomes 9 when it's added to something from B. And let's look for all the different possibilities. Let's see, 4 plus 3 is 7. 5 plus 4, that's 9. So there's 1 right there. 1. Uh, 5 and 4 here would make a 9. It's 2. Let's see, 6 and... 3, 3, 7, and 2, 4, and 8 really doesn't go with anything here because there's not a 1, and we've already reached our upper limit here, so there's four different choices. So the answer is 4 over 20, and 4 over 20 is the same as saying, let's see, for the answer choices, they give us a decimal. So let's um, see, how do we get that? Okay, 20 divided by 4, that... 0 0.2. That's answer choice B. Uh, do I have time to do number 68? No, looks like I am out of time. So I will continue this in the next video. Catch me there.